All right. Hi, Leslie's still here. I'm with uh, Tony Gillum now of Rising Storm. And, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of bring to you this, the story that I've, I've heard of uh, the relationship between Rising Storm and, and, and uh, Tripwire. It sounds pretty, uh, pretty fascinating. Um, so I, I thought it might be good for our, our fans to know. What okay. Well, um, yeah, Rising Storm is basically going to be an expansion for, uh, for the product Heroes of Stalingrad. And it's going to be um, a sponsored expansion. It's, it's like a mod team, if you like, which has the uh, backing of a studio. And obviously Tripwire, you know, they, they, they came from a mod, as you've been discussing with Alan. You've got a, you've got a very good sort of success story there of a, of a mod that made really good. And um, I think they're, you know, if you like, this is their kind of bow to their roots. And, um, and they've, been, um, they've been very active in trying to encourage a mod to produce uh, some, some great, hopefully great quality um, uh, expansion material for Heroes of Stalingrad. And to give um, guys like myself and um, and the guys on my team a chance to show the world what we can do, and um, so we've been given uh, we've been given access to the software development kit, and we have been given a lot of backing. They give, um, for example, I've uh, I've been going to various shows uh, here with One uh, C and and with Tripwire, talking about uh, about this mod, and um, flying the flag really. So um, yeah, we're we're expecting to bring out our mod. I think I can probably say a little bit more about this now that we're getting closer to release of Heroes of Stalingrad. We're expecting to bring out our mod in summer of next year, and we're also going to be get, putting out some promotional material, um, some screenshots, videos, and so on, um, on a kind of monthly basis uh, following the release of Heroes of Stalingrad. So you can expect to be seeing a lot more of our uh, mod in the middle of uh, October. And again in the middle of November as we get more and more stuff coming, coming online to show you guys. <laughs> it's a bit noisy here, sorry. <laughs> another exciting day at Gamescom. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Another exciting day, yeah. yeah. So is there um, anything you can kind of tease us with about the mod? I can, I can actually, yeah. Um, a lot of people have been talking about what they would expect from a Pacific Theatre mod and obviously there are, there are very many things that you would expect to see. You would expect to see some form of a Banzai charge from the Japanese, which I cannot confirm. You would expect to see, uh, for example, uh, the Japanese use of uh, what's called the knee mortar, which I cannot confirm. You would expect to see flamethrowers, uh, for example, which I can confirm. <laughs> so um, that's something to look forward to. The, obviously, it's, it's a fairly uh, involved technological issue. It's going to look pretty cool when you've got your uh, nice graphics cards uh, working on this. And um, I can certainly confirm that. We'll be showing a little bit of that off um, in our uh, media updates, which, as I say, are going to come out on a monthly basis uh, following the release of Heroes of Stalingrad. Awesome. That sounds exciting. I'm, I'm kind of picturing the flamethrower in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a pretty scary looking yeah. flamethrower, I have to say. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm one of these guys, when I go to see a 3D movie, I'm always the one that's <gasps> doing this every time. So, I, I, um, yeah, that, I, I can imagine exactly how that's going to look. That's probably going to have me ducking under my chair on a regular basis, I would have thought, yeah. So, um, how did you get into working on this mod? Okay, well, um, I've, I've kind of done quite a few things uh, with Tripwire in the past. Um, how it originally happened was uh, I, used to, um, I used to live in Stalingrad, or Volkograd as it's now called. And um, I once posted, as a big fan of Red Orchestra, I once posted on the forums, if anybody wants to come to, uh, to a trip to Stalingrad, to Volkograd, uh, I have some contacts there, I can show you around, we can take you to some of the key sites, some of the key locations. And I received um, a, a private message from Alan Wilson, um, who you've just been talking to, saying, Tony, here's an NDA, um, and let's discuss a little trip to Stalingrad, because of course this was way back at the inception of Heroes of Stalingrad, I guess. Um, and um, 
th they did a research trip and, and we got some very privileged access. I was kind of fortunate that I, you know, I had some good contacts there. I guess I did a good job yeah. because <laughs> I'm still here um, now running a mod, um, which is a great opportunity for me. And, uh, you know, obviously I have to say, you know, there aren't that many studios in, in the world which would actually give, uh, which would actually give guys like myself, you know, enthusiastic modders who love the game, give us a chance to actually do the kind of thing I'm doing now. So, you know, that's a, uh, I feel a lot of gratitude for that. Um, so yeah, it started there, um, the relationship has developed. Uh, it's, um, it now means that I've got a team of about 30 developers scattered all over the globe, which makes for a kind of interesting daily schedule. Uh, morning talks uh, with the Australian coders, uh, daytime talks with the guys in Europe, because I'm based in London, and evening talks with, uh, with the guys in America, and, uh, and a few hours sleep thrown in every, every now and then as well. So, how did you pull together this team of 30 modders? Well, um, we, we've been... We, we've got guys from all different kinds of places. We've got a, a lot of guys who um, were involved in one way or another with the original Red Orchestra. Um, we've got a lot of guys who were involved with the modding of uh, Red Orchestra. Guys that I had worked with in the past on, on various other mod projects. We've got a lot of guys from other mods as well. For example, Forgotten Hope 2. We have uh, some of the key guys from their team. Sorry, Forgotten Hope 2, but uh, it was our gain is their loss, I'm afraid. And um, we've also even got guys from studios uh, who, who love Red Orchestra, basically, and they want to be involved. And uh, so we're getting, we're getting, if you like, we're getting a good mixture of experience and enthusiasm there, which is what I think any mod team needs, because um, having realistic goals and attitudes is not something that you immediately develop when you're in a mod team. Uh, you, need, you need some of the more experienced older hands around to sort of say, well, here's what we can realistically expect to do, and here's the time frame we can realistically expect to do that. So it, it's been a very good mixture there of guys, um, you know, from all walks, really, all feeding into this project. And, um, and for me, it's been an absolutely fantastic experience. I've, I've, I've learned more in the past year than I ever learned when I was at university, which isn't a sad reflection on the British university system, but, uh, well, take it as you will. It's been a really good experience for me. Great. Well, you know, it's, um, thank you for your time. It's no a problem, really so. interesting story. I really appreciated kind of seeing the, the heart that's behind both the mod and the game from both mm -hmm. you, you and your folks and Tripwire. So thank you for the time. Thank you very much. So, and thank you, and, and keep looking at GeForce.com for Gamescom updates. <laughs>